Aloha, Gemini. Welcome to our weekly reading. You guys must have your work cut out for you because the amount of work, which is play, it was so much fun. I just downloaded like all of my favorite music because I have a DJ set coming up and I had to do the work for my dream journey. I had a dream um, about maybe over the weekend or something where this might be helpful to you all where a message came through and I acted on that dream. I honored my dream today, but it was through something that just felt like I had to do it. It was like a health concern for my ch children. And essentially, um, it feels like through the dream, I knew what the message was initially, but I actually took the action on it today. So you guys might be um, figuring out what's happening for you in the liminal space. You guys might be putting some pieces together from long outstanding issues of your intellectual property. So this is um, third and ninth house matter. So from the mother piece, Tara, we got the shaman of swords. And funny, I thought I was pulling just three cards and we got four. So the five of wands with the son of wands, this came up for um, Taurus, I believe. And that is your 12th house. And we also have the star. Yeah, you guys are definitely figuring out how to move away from maybe, um, you know, playing around with people who don't take you seriously or, you know, playing a part for people to be amused by or to just sort of be this like chaotic frenzy, which this is totally, I do these things. And this is something that I'm starting to move towards is taking my work as something that I can really cherish and be so delighted to share as light work, as something that people can see themselves in and can be motivated to also share their light in that way. Um, and then with the star, we have an eagle overhead. An eagle in your mind is coming to mind by, um, oh gosh, what are they? Um, Boards of Canada. So that is your song. Which is such a trip. It's such a beautifully trippy song. Eagle in your mind. And honestly, it's just one of those things where when we do everything correctly on paper, it just shows. It speaks to the integrity of the work that we're doing. And then it allows for other people to see us in our full justice and page of air energy. This justice is like, I was diligent. I did the work. I studied and I actually showed up for myself in my space. And then this page of air is just giving me, um, in the same way that the Son of Wands is, it's like someone who knows which part they want to play, but rather than maybe playing a part that's a little um, too out there, you just honor yourself authentically. Um, ooh, that gave me angel bumps. You, you honor yourself authentically. So um, you're going to have the focus of what you want to attain. And we're going to work to produce that in a carbon copy format rather than um, you know XYZ is sort of like a fear that we don't address so it's lingering in the back of our mind and then it subconsciously has to present itself to show us this is what you've been focusing on instead of that we are straight up just channeling focus determination mercury is in our sixth house Gemini um, well, I'm not a Gemini. I am an Irish triplet and my younger sisters are twins and they're Gemini. So I can identify with y'all. Um, Mercury, your ruling planet is in the sixth house of Scorpio. So with that in mind this week, yeah, you guys, you guys might have like a thousand things going on at one time, but it feels exhilarating because it's where your heart belongs. You guys really do enjoy the mental diligence required otherwise you get bored and boredom leads to destructive behaviors at least for me so three six yep um and also nikola tesla keeps coming through it's just a matter of like maybe we need to look at the third sixth and ninth house you guys might need to look at an additional house this week if you want to dive deeper into the energy um, but over the course of this week we're going to have venus entering sagittarius so exciting it's already no, it will enter Sagittarius over the course of like the end of the week I'm recording live and then into the week of the 20th through the 27th. And Mercury moves from 10 degrees Scorpio to 20 degrees Scorpio. So we are concretely manifesting um, a way forward in our daily life. The moon will move in the course of the week from Gemini. You guys are hosting the emotions to Virgo. So that's the higher octave of Mercury. And the highest octave of Mercury is actually another planet, Uranus, which is Aquarius. And 
that's your ninth house, Gemini. So you guys um, are going to come to believe in yourselves in ways that maybe you haven't yet. Um, and then it's also the power of our belief inspires other people to see us and to believe in us equally. So it feels like Archangel Raguel with justice and then also the Shaman of Swords is just like your mind is a diamond, but you know which facet to divot, to pivot on, divot? Yeah, you know which side has a divot and you know which, where, which and where to pivot. La a mao mao. This is the kite with the stingray. So the stingray does as an animal totem messenger, which I'm not indigenous, but I am of the diaspora, so I can I can say that. Um, they are referred to as a um, messenger of like passionate relationships, and then air. So you guys might be coming amongst genius, and also this is a ten. So in the course of the week, this energy will be prevalent with the mind and how you guys are presenting yourselves and how you guys are being received by others. The goddess of wind, atonement. The day indeed passes. Hala no ka la. La Omama is the goddess of the winds. We got one, two, and then two cards from wands which are ideas i think fire is more of our passion our motivation our why this is the um how in a way the air element is how how do we picture it how can it be conceived how can it be um trimmed and made perfect as you see i got like a poof on top of a poof on top of a, a noggin so it's like how can you guys um, shift the ways that you guys have been doing things as Jupiter is retrograding in your sign, allowing for you to collect the pieces that are really valuable, but might have been overlooked because there was so much going on. Okay, the fact that there were, there are at least 63 different kinds of winds named the Hawaiian dictionary, named in the Hawaiian dictionary, attests to the intimate knowledge that Hawaiians have of wind contributing greatly to their exquisite navigational abilities. Hawaiians were also inventors of lupe, or kite. The power of the winds was believed to be contained in a sacred calabash, a gourd container, called the ipu maka ni o la a mau mau, the calabash of the winds. La o mau mau, so from what I understand, the gourd is used for hula, so it's used to keep the tempo. So maybe some of you guys are working with music, DJing like me, and you need to get a SoundCloud. You need to upload your first tracks. You need to start doing that research and figuring out a learning plan so that you don't just pile up more and more, but you actually get those things accomplished and you give yourself credit for when you, when you actually do what you say you want to do. La'a means sacred, holy, devoted, dedicated, consecrated, set apart, or reserved as for a sacred purpose, which is what feels like you guys are going to come into honoring this week. Ho o la'a means cursed, time or season. Mao means clear up as to rain, to fade, to pass as sadness. So it's like that movement into a new vibe and into a new emotion from what felt like a lot of heaviness this week and a lot of the need to shift gears where where you might have felt stuck or a dark night of the soul mao mao means clear calm descendant posterity and distant u mao a ela ke kao maha the sadness has ceased these words suggest the importance of separating yourself from your mistakes the following story illustrates this concept okay so um, the people became angry at Maui for the destruction he caused and they didn't want to talk to him. They um, isolated him because he wanted to fly a kite and he called for increasingly powerful winds and they, the winds ended up creating a big storm that ravaged all the taro fields. Taro fields. So, in his isolation, Maui built a small kite which taught him to observe the relationships between the winds and the weather. So, the mind and what's going on on the outside. That's what we need to balance. I remember now from your reading from last week is this need to balance mental activity with what's physically happening around us. To not get caught up in um, delusions of grandeur or delusions of ego or even like forgetting your dreams to go chase someone else's. Because that that's what it felt like you guys needed to start handling your own energy and intentions in a way that honors you and what you have to bring through rather than 
someone who is maybe like a fabulous socialite celebrity influencer who doesn't pay you anything and you know or you're following someone else's belief systems that don't mind your business they don't give you anything to pivot and divot from you just are polishing other people's diamonds when you have this like huge diamond in your backyard and you're like oh whatever like we'll save it for a rainy day and it's like no this is like something that could build those people up because you're so close with them and you care about them but what you have to offer is like the unifying bond for maybe a lot of different groups like I like to play with a lot of different genres when I DJ but I was able to look to a mentor look to someone who's my musical peer and thus create more partnership in my movement forward because I understand the value of it because I have it and you guys have something so you understand the value of it rather than pretending that you don't have it and you have to chase other people's stuff. Okay, so Maui discovered the ways that the winds could be used to assist fishermen and farmers because he shared his discovery freely, freely, sharing discoveries from ourselves, not, not ourselves. We don't want to share ourselves freely. That's what slavery is. We want to share of ourselves freely, Gemini. So the people forgave him for his destruction that he caused. They began to call him Maui, whose kite foretells the weather. So la'amama means distant sa sacredness. I almost said distant sadness, but it feels like you guys are moving away from something that you were able to address, which is important. Her winds teach that acceptance and atonement are necessary steps on the road. So maybe it's like you, you had a lot of this because people just saw you as this, Gemini. And the way that you're going to atone for it is really just getting into this isolated bath and water ceremony and honoring, um, honestly, I haven't looked at the transits for this week, y'all. <laughs> so we're gonna, we're gonna go back to Wednesday. Um, there's a really dynamic day on Sunday, the 27th. It's just like the whole charts lit up. There's almost a aspect to every house aside from Leo and uh, Aquarius, which for you guys is your third house and your ninth house. So there's something to look at there between Scorpio Leo and Aquarius, there is something going on that needs to be um, not compensated for. Don't compensate, deliver. Make it known that you have a mark to make on the world and it's coming from your heart and not your mind, your heart. So La Mama means a distant sacredness. Her winds teach that acceptance and atonement are necessary steps on the road to attainment. Like Maui, sometimes our egos fly away from us and we attempt to tackle more than we can handle. When Maui ignored the warnings of the keeper of the winds, things got out of control. By having less ambitious goals, slowing down and observing what was around him, Maui regained his sense of perspective. Sometimes surrendering may enable you to breeze through a situation. Yeah, we don't wanna be like this with this violence and volcanic uh, conflictatory energy because we have too much going on and we're not actually able to be this to speak our life and creativity and to ascend you see how it's so fascinating how the eagle in your mind is literally the eagle who's waiting at the top of the ladder for um, what you speak that blue that chakra energy um, and then this passion is all of these uh, fire energies the wands so we don't want our passion to um, devastate us. We want it to support us and to fan the flame. A Hawaiian word for atonement is kalahala. Kala means to loosen, untie, free, release, unburden, let go, and take off. Hala means that time has passed. As the expression hala no kala, the day indeed passes enough for the day. Not only is it all right to fail, but failure may be a necessary component of the learning process. So if you're holding on to a fear of failing because of a past failure, just understand the lessons you needed to learn from that. Like for me, another example, I had one set. It was at the high school. It wasn't that big of a deal, but I didn't bring my charger. I forgot my laptop charger and I used my laptop to DJ. So it was one of those things where it was like the last song of the night and then my um, or last maybe 15, 20 minutes of the night and my laptop died. But it's like, that taught me something so important. Even though it was an audience of high schoolers, it's just like that time in our life when we go to a party and we have a DJ, it's, it's sharing enough for everybody. And I was that teacher who would always bring a speaker. So 
so people knew me in a way to be like, oh yeah, she DJ'd, her laptop died, but they still had fun because I played the songs that they wanted to play in the moment. I was able to let go of what I wanted to play, what I wanted to DJ, and be more present with the audience. And when that, when that moment happened, I knew that it wasn't really important for me to be there. So that led me to other audiences, to people who I wanted to play for, who didn't have the top 40 as their you know, set list request, which, sorry if you play that, but that's just not me. I, I'm very eclectic. And you guys will see that when you watch and listen to my playlists and my sets. I'll share more soon. I'm excited to have high quality music, so it's changing things. Okay. So to attempt to go beyond natural limits may endanger yourself and others. Maui was courageous enough to risk failure and wise enough to learn from his mistakes. Don't be afraid to raise up your dreams while maintaining a firm grasp on what is possible. Acknowledging your limitations prevents you from getting carried away. Allow the fresh breezes of La Amau Mau to gently guide you towards your full potential. Ooh, and then we're gonna just read real quick what the Mother Peace Tarot has to say. Shaman of Swords is expressing the heart's desire and spirit connections. Beautiful. The Sun and the Five of Wands. Five is struggle, working problems out through conflict, volcanic eruption in personal life, and the Sun is a clown, the energy to delight, light, relaxed spirit, and freedom. We want those qualities, even if it's um, a little bit showboaty, even if it's a little silly, sometimes it helps to have that, but we need to know when and where it's appropriate, when the context is appropriate to be super lighthearted, and how to let people know that you are attentive, focused, um, paying attention, present. And the star. Like rain, gentling a pool, grace descends to one who opens in trust and love. The star represents hope, freedom from pain, the touch of the Babylonian mother goddess Ishtar, a ritual of cleansing and self-healing, and Aphrodite's love. Gemini, you guys got it going on. Go on ahead and drop me a comment that says I easily manage my time and energy. It's a true resource to be able to do those things. And then you guys might want to tap in with some Tesla frequencies. Look at your third, sixth, and ninth house this week to get a fuller picture of the energy. To my subscribers, watch your sun, moon, and rising to get a better comprehensive grasp on what's going on for you in your life this week if you don't already have it all together. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and until next time, all of my aloha.